Hey guys, welcome back to Eric's Hobby Workshop. In this video, I'm going to be making a terrifying kaiju from scratch, using body parts randomly generated, using cards drawn by some of the most talented artists on YouTube. This video is part of the third Monster Bash, a massive collaboration with some of the coolest channels out there. So here's how Monster Bash works. Each participant draws seven cards, and then we put all those cards together in a giant deck, shuffle them together, and each one of us draws seven random monster parts. Those monster parts are going to make up your monster. This time around, I got these scything talons, these extra legs, this curly thing that I'm going to interpret as a tentacle, this squid fellow, these butterfly wings and these insect wings, and this one here, which we could interpret as a texture or something, but I'm going to do something special for that one. Put a pin in that. We'll come back to that one later. So with all these pieces in mind, to prepare, I watched a bunch of old kaiju movies and sketched out my monster. If you're like me and you like foreign language films and dream of one day watching without the subtitles, you might like today's sponsor. And that sponsor is Babbel. Babbel is one of the best ways to learn a language for people of all skill levels. I'm personally using it to learn Russian because my wife is Russian and sometimes when she's on the phone with her parents, I think she's talking about me and I want to know for sure. And we're also having a baby soon and uh, we're going to teach him Russian. So I think that as long as I stay a few lessons ahead of my young son, then uh, he'll grow up thinking his dad knows Russian as well. The lessons are short, so they're great for somebody with a busy schedule. And they're designed by real language teachers to teach you slang, culture, history, and natural sounding phrases rather than just a bunch of vocabulary. I like having the app on my phone because I can get my daily practice in when I'm waiting for projects to dry or something like that and make the most out of those little moments of downtime in my day. Babbel's taught me lots of useful phrases too, like u nas budit malchik and gdje butilka, which I'm sure will be one that will come in handy very soon. So if you're looking to learn a language, give Babbel a try. If you use the link in my description, you'll get 65% off when you subscribe. Thanks Babbel for sponsoring this video. Now let's get back to that monster. first thing I did was buy this round wooden base from Michaels. It's quite large and it's pretty sturdy so it should work out nicely. I drilled two holes in that because the next step is going to be to add a sturdy wire armature on the inside. I started with the skeleton of the back limbs which are going to support the whole body and so I use this really thick sculpture wire because it, who knows how much weight it's going to need to take but it's better to over engineer this than to have a disaster. Next I use some aluminum foil to bulk out the torso. Getting a bit of bulk in there will save clay in the next step, and uh, we definitely want some bulk. Come on! Let's get big! Come on! For pretty much the whole miniature, I'm going to use this epoxy sculpt, which reminds me of little like Ben & Jerry's ice cream tubs or something like that, the way it comes. I'm going to use a generous four scoops of that because we want this thing to be big, you know, like, real big. You got to do at least four scoops. Come on. Epoxy Sculpt is nice to work with because you can smooth it out with wet fingers and it dries really hard. And one way to keep the fingerprints down when you're working with it is to use some nitrile gloves. Which I would recommend doing anyways because it says it's a skin irritant. So I sensually caress the legs, smoothing out as much of the fingerprints as I can. And uh, trying to ignore this milky discharge. And then I didn't know what to do for the butt so I sort of did this like lemon shape, I guess. Anyways, those are my legs. Next I'm going to make some more limbs with epoxy sculpt, but this time I'm going to use a thinner gauge of galvanized steel wire for the interior skeleton. Uh, the only issue is this particular wire is uh, pretty greasy. Oh, that's greasy. You can see this black residue on my hands here. Yeah, that's greasy. Greasy. So after cutting the pieces to length, I washed with some soap and water just to get them nice and clean. I put down a white sheet of baking parchment because it's non-stick. Um, the clay is white too. I didn't really predict this. I thought I'd bought the black epoxy sculpt. So from a cinematic perspective, I apologize if it's kind of looking like a polar bear in a snowstorm with very little contrast, but um, what can I say? It's past Halloween, so it's pretty much Christmas, right? I guess it's appropriate. At this point, it's time to take care of these scything talons, these mantis-like forelimbs. I should probably Google what the deal is with mantis limbs, because I don't really know too much about them. Let's check it out. Okay, closest relative is the termite. Cool. Wait a minute. You know what, never mind. 
Okay, where was I? Oh yeah, I was gonna make some chicken wing looking type limbs. While the limbs are drying, I coat the rest of the body and the big bulbous head in more epoxy sculpt. At this point he's looking pretty harmless, but uh, that won't last long. When everything's dry, I move on to attaching the limbs. Next I give the monster a bit of acupuncture with the old power drill and slot the wire ends of the limbs in there. These wire ends give a lot of extra strength. So it's time to make the tentacles that give the piece its wiggly charm. I do the same as the other limbs, wire inside, epoxy sculpt outside. I tried for a variety of wiggles and squiggles and curls just to get a varied look. The limbs are attached and I blended it with a bit more epoxy sculpt and then I sculpted a bit of chest muscular on there as well. I'm not saying the anatomy of this creature makes sense but maybe it makes a little bit more sense now. Mm -hmm. I also gave the creature the beginnings of a mouth, kind of just like a little dinosaur. We'll get back to that later. I drilled some holes for the tentacles and for a brief second I considered giving this thing eyes and then I decided no, the slightly creepy smoothness is more alien and unsettling. So I played around with some tentacle placement until I found something that I like. Then I added even more scoops of epoxy sculpt to blend them in. All right, it's time to give this thing its wings. I sketched out a butterfly wing shape on a piece of paper and then traced that onto a piece of clear plastic. The plastic is actually from one of these IKEA picture frames. I had one break and fall off my wall at pretty much just the right time. I wouldn't recommend these frames for posters necessarily, but uh, they make good building materials for wings, which is nice. With a craft knife, I very carefully traced out the outline and cut out my wing, scoring and breaking where I could, being very careful because this plastic is very brittle. There's a protective layer on this plastic, so I remove it now. To add some insect-like paneling, I score some lines into the plastic with an X-Acto knife. Very pretty. These wings are trying to combine the elements of the insect wings and the butterfly wings to make like a butterflyish insect wing that doesn't really exist in nature but is kind of a combination of the two. I figure that's the best of both worlds. Next I'm going to warp the plastic with a heat gun to make a more interesting shape. I do this carefully and I take my time because the plastic goes from rigid to very droopy almost without warning. Watch out when overshooting with the heat gun though because the excess heat from this project uh, warped my cutting mat. For those of you keeping score at home, this is the fifth cutting mat that I've destroyed on this channel. Now these wings look great, but they're nearly invisible to the naked eye at the wrong angle. So I'm going to use some yellow contrast paint to add some nice yellow tint to them, which should give it an insect-like appearance while still maintaining that nice translucence. Next I glued on some galvanized wire using super glue and accelerant. This accelerant stuff is new to me, and I've seen a lot of other crafting channels use it, but what they never mention is the smell. This smell is really weird, and it oversprays everywhere. So if you're smarter than me, put down a paper towel underneath whatever you're spraying. I drilled some holes in the monster's back, and then making sure to blur the footage as much as possible for maximum rage during editing, I pinned the wings into place. The wires allow me to bend them a little bit and get the exact pose that I want. Looking pretty sweet. Now let's add some details. Hey, remember before when we made some pointy bits? Me neither. But we did. I added some extra detail to the hands using some chunky bits for the claws and I also added some teeth to his mouth starting with some soft epoxy sculpt for the gums and then inserting some sharp cones of epoxy sculpt for the teeth and defining the gum line with a sculpting tool. They look really sharp and creepy and I love it. To give this fella some massive scale I 3D printed some buildings and I scattered them out on the wooden base. On these back buildings here, I destroyed them partially to make it look like the monster had just kicked his way through and then put down some sand to look like rubble. For the rest of the base, I applied some more glue, spreading it around with a paintbrush, and then dusted some grout on, just to give some very fine texture to the rest of the base. 
When that was dry, I brushed off the excess grout and spray painted it an off-white. I painted the base rim black for a nice contrast, and then got to work painting the rest of the base. I started with dark grey, mapping out some roads, and painting in that rubble as well. When that was dry, I taped over the roads with quarter inch pieces of masking tape to get nice straight edges on them. Painted the rest of the surface a nice grassy green. To add some color and detail to the buildings, I used a combination of contrast paints and some very thin oil washes with mineral spirits. I picked out some gray details on the top of the buildings. I really like the capillary action of the mineral spirits. Look at it just sliding along those cracks there on its own. Nice. When I removed the tape, it took some of the gray underneath with it, so it needed some touch-ups, but it's looking pretty sweet. With some super glue, I added a few dots of clump foliage to look like plants, trees, bushes, whatever. They look pretty cool. The first step is to take my monster out to the garage where the fumes from the spray paint won't asphyxiate me. Then I hit it with some black primer and I think it looks kind of Strangely vulnerable here when it's just curled up on its back like that. Next I come in with a zenithal prime of white spray paint from on top. This just picks out some of the highlights and gives some volume to the shapes. I try to simulate the same paint effect on the wings, but with a brush. Once the wings are attached to the model, I do a little bit of work to blend them in and then try to simulate some of those shadows that I didn't get from the wings not being there when I did the Zenithal priming. I come in with a bit of purple ink to add some vibrant color and a bit of visual interest and sort of an alien appearance to the tips of the limbs and all the tentacles as well. For the mouth, I start with a neon green. I want to get a really sort of creepy glowing oozing effect for the mouth, something really alien and terrifying. I use some neon yellow in the very center of the mouth itself, which will be my brightest color. And then I come back in with some darker greens on the teeth until I'm up to almost completely black, because these areas will be shaded from the glow coming from inside the mouth. I really like how the effect is looking, but I decided to expand it to be the outer circle around the mouth as well, just to add more visual impact from a bit of a distance. Really liking how this is looking. For the final touch, I'm going to add some gloss varnish, just so it looks all slippery and slimy in there as well. Something that you really wouldn't want to be devoured by. We're almost done. But there's one card left that we haven't got to yet. Remember this one? Let me show you what I have planned. When I was making the wings earlier, I noticed plastic makes this really cool sound. So what if that was the sound of the monster? I like it. Captain, we're picking up something massive on the scanners. My god. The legends are true. What legends? It all started eons ago. When... It's too late. Emergency servicing procedures! There it is.
is, guys. One terrifying kaiju made from scratch. I had a ton of fun taking part in another Monster Bash, so thank you for Trent from Miscast for inviting me, and go check out everybody else who took place in the collaboration, guys. I'll put a link to their stuff in the description. Thanks again to all of my patrons and everyone else who continues to support me. I appreciate it a ton. Make sure you're subscribed because we have a lot more cool projects on the way. Thanks for tuning in, guys, and we'll see you next time on Eric's Hobby Workshop.